Now, is this doesn't look like it's smaller. No, it, it actually is. If you compared it to some of the competitive seats that we looked at in the other room and even in this room, if you'd like, it's, it's a little narrower in this region. But again, the key point is this con concavity or convexity, sorry, with the taller bolsters to support the pelvis. Okay. It's instrumental. And uh, you just sat in it, so you can tell me. I think uh, from a firmness perspective, it's also it, it's similar to the other seats that we've had you sit in earlier today. But the, the point is then you're trying to keep a person comfortably in this portion of the seat, right? You're trying to exactly. control exactly where they are. Without over being overly confining or overly restricting. All right. Over Can here. Question? Yeah. Sure. Um, it says, how long, how many minutes, hours should one sit in a seat during a test drive to get a true feel for how the seat will feel long term? Good one. That's a great question. There's a lot of research on that. Um, what I'd urge a, urge a customer to do is, is think of your uh, typical commute time and try to model your, your drive along those those lines. So if you're in the car for 20 minutes, I'd suggest you test drive for at least 20 minutes on a comparable road. But the research I was going to suggest, uh, when we evaluate seats here, uh, we do that showroom initial evaluation, but then we then we do separate evaluations at specific points in the drive, so probably at about the 30-minute mark, and then we do another one again at the 90-minute mark. That's just our kind of conventional practice. Okay, maybe one more question. Are you using the soy foam in any of those seats? Uh, y there's a big push to get soy in many of our seats. Today, I know the Mustang uh, that we didn't show, but we have probably in this swarm of seats somewhere. <laughs> Um, the Mustang does use soy foam, and again, th there's a big push, and going forward, we'll have soy in, in a lot of our seats, probably all, in fact. Um, I, what was your first car? What was my first car? Yeah. A Mustang uh, GT Convertible. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, so th those had nice I'm a second-generation yeah. Ford guy, okay. so. All right. Uh, and you were telling me your first, uh, um, was a it was. I was 16, it was a Dodge Omni. It was before okay. neon, so I wasn't sensitive to seat comfort. Didn't, and you really didn't care what the seat. I was happy to have a car. <laughs> okay. Um, moving on here. Are you, is this where you want to go here? Okay, this is. So this is, this is actually this, this seat detrimmed. So it ha suggests, you know, it has the same lumbar mechanism that we highlighted in the next room. So that again, that's to alleviate the fatigue of some of the occupants. It, there's a control on the side of the seat that allows this mechanism to be tuned in to wherever the occupant or the customer feels is, is, is best for them. And then this is the foam that just sits on top of that. As you can see, it detrimmed. If, if this isn't a soy foam part right now, but I mean, eventually it will, will be. So what do you look for? How's, what, what's good in foam these days? There was a question regarding durability earlier, right? So um, density is how we measure durability, and there's a whole set of um, component level foam specific tests that get at durability. Seats really react to weather you were telling me too. The, the seat you sit on in December in Dearborn is not the same seat you sit on in July. Right? True. And, it, and in fact, we're, we're uh, this room we're trying to keep temperature and humidity controlled. I know we've got the door open today, so that kind of compromises that. But there's a little mechanism up there where we try to control the temperature and humidity. And that's just to Mike's point exactly. Imagine um, in the dead of winter here in Michigan, if you were to sit in a seat, that, that seat would feel much stiffer and you would sit probably on top of the seat versus in that seat. And then imagine if, if this room weren't controlled and we were to apply a whole slew of objective tests to that particular seat, we would get a set of different numbers in the end and we might drive a design change solely based on the fact that we didn't properly control the temperature in this room. Another way they determine uh whether a seat is comfortable is with this indenture. Is that what it's called? Right yeah, we've got a, a whole over here, so we've got a whole set of indenters. Okay. Um, this is this is one. This is a uh, a metal form intended to represent the back of a 50th percentile or a medium-sized male in North America. Okay, and what what size is that? Um, Probably around 5'9". Five 5'9 nine. Five, five nine is the average. In North America with uh, probably a, uh, a weight of about 175 pounds, call it. So what we do with this is we'll instrument it or mount it to, to this machine. And then we'll slide some seats under here using that fixture sometimes. And then we'll, we'll this thing will, is activated by a set of computers. And it'll come down and it'll load the seat. And this back will push on the seat. 
Exactly. And then from that, we collect objective data regarding firmness. So we, as we measure the broad range of seats that are out there in the industry, we get a range, again, from super soft to super firm, and we've picked a specific place where we want to position the Ford Blue Oval. Who picked that? We did based on all this research that Larry highlighted a little bit earlier. Uh, Hallie? Okay. Do you collaborate, co-create with consumers directly on designs? Uh, we definitely do, uh, and that was part of the research that we talked about early on in the uh, design phase when we're talking about the styling, how it's going to look. We do all kinds of customer clinics where we have uh, groups come in and they'll give us uh, feedback on different concepts that we could go or different directions w that we could go, so a big part of the appearance element. Um, for the DNA effort, right, the, the seats that Mike develops, uh, we're working on Lincoln DNA right now, and so Mike has developed a couple of seats uh, that we've tried out with customers, and so uh, we did it back in December. We camouflaged a bunch of our vehicles and competitor vehicles uh, so that the customers didn't know what product they were uh, evaluating, and then we asked them questions specifically about how the seat holds them, how the seat feels, and uh, we take that feedback then, and that determines uh, uh, next uh, iteration of the engineering behind uh, whatever we're researching. So we do a ton of that and that helps us. Uh, the other thing that we do is we also look at uh, external research. Uh, so uh, JD Power Peel does a survey uh, annually where they ask customers what they think of their products. They have questions about uh, the way the seats hold them and the way the seat is uh, comfortable. Uh, Consumer Reports does evaluations. We study those uh, different evaluations and, and those things drive our, our DNA and our designs and our products. 